What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the garage. Say hello again to the E46 330. Once again, if you guys have not been following along, this is kind of a group project car between me and a couple buddies of mine. So we've got a couple modifications done to this car already. Huge shout out to the guys over at Unique Style Racing for sponsoring this video and sponsoring some of the parts on this car. Today, we are gonna be working on the interior. All right, so don't mind the mess in here, but this is kind of currently what we're working with in here. Obviously, we have a lot of things to fix and replace. Um, you know, the trim here is cracked and all that. But today, we're going to be focusing on this whole area, the whole gauge pod. So I've got some parts here from Unique Style Racing. Uh, I've got a carbon fiber back section here. I've got some gray gauges to put on, as well as some chrome surrounds. So we're going to go ahead and show you this whole process of how to take this out and take it all apart and put it back in with something a little bit cooler. Okay, so once again, these all came from Unique Style Racing, and uh, they're working a lot more on E46 parts for this car, so stay tuned for stuff from them. But basically, we are going to kind of pay homage to the E46 M3 by changing the gauge faces to um, more of a silver, and then we also have this M carbon fiber here, so don't hate on the logo. Uh, obviously, this is not an M car, but I think it'll be cool. Nice little interior spice up. And then we also have these little chrome surrounds here um, that will go around you know, each one of the gauges itself. Um, this is more of a you know instructional DIY video on how to take your uh, gauges apart and replace them if you wanted to do something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this without taking the steering wheel off, but I will likely adjust it up and down and out of my way pull this out as far as I can first. Um, what I need to do first is I've got a Torx T20. There are two screws right here that we need to remove. So this should just kind of come right out. If we grab the top here, and slide it out just like that. And then we have some things that we need to actually unplug. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is unplug the battery. So when you're screwing with this kind of stuff, it's always just a safe idea to unplug the battery. Uh, that way you don't have any random codes and all that stuff that kind of pops up. So once you've got those two screws out, once again, you just kind of pull this out and you can kind of navigate this out without moving the steering or without taking the steering wheel off. But we do need to unplug a couple things here. So uh, let's see here. We've got two things to unplug. I will show you this once I get it out, but uh, let's see. One and two. All right, so I don't need to weave this out. I can. Okay, so if you look here, you can see there's two plugs here, one on each side. So the black one over here goes on the farther side, the right side. The white one goes on the left side. So these are plugs that. Once they go in like this, they have this little lock here, push it up and it locks into place. So all you really need to do here is push down this little tab, slide this black piece out. And once you slide it down like that, it'll force itself out of the actual hole here on the back. So hopefully you guys can see there's one here. This is the white or the black side, this is the white side. So the colors correspond. All right. So the next step we need to do is take this whole assembly apart. If you flip it over, there should be a couple of Torx screws. So these are T10s. I'm assuming somebody has already tampered with this because it looks like we're missing a screw there, but there's one there, should be another one there. There's one over here and one over here. So these are T10s, go ahead and remove those. And there's also another screw here in the middle. So don't forget that one. Okay, so once you've got your T10s out of there, you should be able to go around and there's a couple tabs that we need to pop. So if you look here, there's one there. There's two here, which look like they've already been popped. So I'm pretty sure this has been tampered with at some point. Um, and then there's another one here. So just take yourself, get yourself a little flathead screwdriver and pop those out. So you kind of have to do it all simultaneously. So I'm gonna kind of prop it and pull it up out just like that. That one's kind of loose already. And then once again, these here are already loose in the middle for some reason. And then there's one over here. Here we 
we go. Okay, and then you gotta pull the tops off of these. And then this whole thing should just drop out. There we go. Okay, so this next part can be a little bit tricky, a little bit scary, but I promise you that um, you're not really gonna break anything here. You just need to be cautious. So what we're gonna do is actually pull these needles off of here and put our new gauge faces overlay on top. So it'll sit just like that. So what you kinda need to do is kinda grab it like that and just pull straight up. Um, having a nice little small trim tool will also make your life a little bit easier. All right, so this one was for this one here. And you want to do your best to just pull it straight up. Okay, so before we go any further, they did supply us with some of this little really thin double-sided tape. So this is what we have to use in order to put this overlay on because if you take this whole thing off, you lose all of the white numbering. And since this is clear and it's not sticky on any side, um, you have to put this on top. So we have to put it up, line it all up perfectly so that our numbers are all visible. Because at nighttime we want this to all be displayed as well. Plus the stock one is all one giant unit, as you can see, and it has the turn signals and the battery, oil, all of that stuff, so we need to leave this here. So basically we're just gonna put an overlay on top and tape it on and just make sure that it's lined up properly. So that will be the hard part, is lining this up exactly perfectly. So um, since I've got little spots here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape here and here. So just a couple small ones right here. Just like that, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So now we need to be very careful putting this on, make sure this is cleaned off. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and remove this sticky side. Okay, try to get this in place as best I can before locking this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these needles back on. So you just wanna be able to make sure you put them straight down right in the spot that they're supposed to go. So line up your zero there and then push it on into place. So then we'll do the exact same thing on this side here. Okay, so here's my tape on this side. I'm not gonna use a ton. I think this will hold. So go ahead and reinstall. Line it all up as best you can. I think that's sufficient. And then go ahead and once again, reinstall your needles. So once your needles are all back into place, this is what it should look like. We have a nice little homage to the E46 M3. All right, so after further assessment, in order to do the rest, we have to take this full lens, clear lens off of here. And there really is no way of doing that other than probably putting this in the oven and taking it apart because I'm pretty sure this is glued together or it's plastic welded or one of the two not exactly sure but i am not seeing a way to release this part so i don't want to take the chance of putting this in the oven so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave it the way it is and uh, just put it back together like that and so that means carbon piece is going to stay off as well as the chrome pieces so if any of you guys are interested in that please let me know but at least you guys got a chance to see how to do new gauge faces on the E46. So I think it actually turned out pretty nice. So what we need to do now is basically just put this cover back together and put our screws back in. So just got to line everything up and click it all back into place until all these clips go back together. Okay, so we've got it all basically back into place. So what we need to do now is put our screws back in. So once again, those are T10s. Start here, 
middle one. And voila, there you have it. So now we've got nice new gray gauge faces. All right, so we're ready to reinstall. Make sure you plug everything back in. So white to white, black to black. Pretty self-explanatory. Get this into place first. And once again, it kind of goes in and clips into place and then you lock it down. In. Go ahead and reinstall. Get all the dust out of here. And then you go ahead and put your T20s back in here. And that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, guys, so that's about it. As you can see, it's all back into place. And it looks pretty dang good to me. So, nice, super clean. I don't really like to do crazy colors. Like I've seen guys do blue and red and yellow, whatever. I actually just prefer the nice cleanliness of the gray. So it should be pretty solid. I mean, just look, it just looks super clean. So pretty excited about that. One other thing, don't forget to put these little rubber pins back in. These are the ones that go right on top of these here. So they just kind of push on into place, one on each side. That's that. All right guys, so that just about does it. Pretty simple install for the most part. So at this point, all we need to do is reconnect the battery and we should be good to go. So that just about does it for today's video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about the install itself, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you guys on the next video. Take care, thanks for watching.